Hi, I'm Natalie Porter and together with my husband Chris, Hello. we run Immaculate Confections based in the UK. And we're delighted to be asked to bring you a new show here on Cape Clips TV. And what better subject could I have chosen than colour? It's my absolute favourite. So we are very pleased indeed to bring you Adventures in Colour with me, Natalie Porter. Over the coming weeks we're going to look at all things to do with colour theory. We're going to look at how you mix colours and how you can use colours to enhance your work, creating better designs that are very pleasing to the eye and are going to wow your customers. We're on on Mondays at 8pm and we're really looking forward to seeing you there. So this week, the first episode, um, we're going to do a sort of a run around on colour theory. Um, that is your sort of foundation blocks and the building blocks for understanding colour and how to use colour effectively in your designs to uh, make them look better, basically. Um, I'm, I'm super, super keen on colour, or always have been. Um, it's an art thing, I suppose, rather than like a, a baking thing. Um, but it makes an enormous difference. I think you can have um, a cake or a model or some flowers or whatever. You could have the odd broken petal, you could have some lumps or bumps in your icing. Um, any of those little things that happen to us all that we all sort of obsess about. Um, if your colours are right and if the piece as a whole kind of sings out with those colours, it's not going to matter one bit. Um, it is just, it is so important, isn't it Christopher? It is I, am. <laughs> I am obsessive. Um, and yeah, I, I just think it's, it's, it's that, it's colours that catch the eye, always, 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 always. So even if you have spent three weeks making a single flower and you've put it together and everything is perfect and every last petal, every last stamen, everything is like spot on, it won't get that sort of wow response from people um, if the colours are a bit naff. So it's just, yeah, so important. Um, it's also like with colours, um, I've got some bits behind me you can see. Like they make you feel and do different things. Um, colour sets the tone for any piece of art. And I genuinely believe with like big old fancy cakes, what we're creating here is art. And that's whether you're a flower person and you're making wedding cakes, or if you're a modelling person and you're making figurines or animals or whatever. Your colours set the tone for the whole thing. Um, they'll make you feel things. So some colours are always thought of as cheery. So like yellows and bright oranges and stuff, like they're happy colours. Um, red, uh, is always like it's the danger colour. So even um, colours are really important in film and TV and advertising yeah. just to because it because it scene. elicits emotions. Um, so yeah, red is always danger. Like you know, red berries stuff like that. You shouldn't eat them, um, and they're, they're colours to put animals off of eating them and stuff. Um, blues are always calming and they make you think of the sea and it's nice and and stuff. So it's it's all of those emotions. And then when you start translating that into cakes. Um, especially wedding cakes, because that, that's my my thing. So I always talk with a bit of a spin for wedding cakes and flowers. Um, they're different, it sets the tone. So you could have something uh, sort of like this one here, um, where it's kind of all white and it's pale colors and stuff. It's got orchids on it. It's that one, it is classic and elegant and it's nice. You can imagine that in a like, a traditional stately home with lots of flowers and stuff and a traditional dress and it's really classic and elegant and that like colour is a huge part of that. Um, that one, I keep getting myself <laughs> all the way around, this one being like it's got those really bright colours on that deep grey background so there's a lot of contrast and it really pops so that is, it is bolder and um, you wouldn't necessarily have that in that same kind of classic stately home setting um, or you can do things if you've got lots of ivories and dusky pinks and eucalyptus colours and stuff then you get that kind of like lovely lacy um, vintage feel to it so colours are just like they're the most important thing um, <laughs> I could go on like this for, for days um, so the first thing to learn with colour is about the colour wheel so I'm going to ask my able and elegant assistant if he will swap cameras for me just like that. Just like that. Um, so, you will hopefully have seen something like this before. Um, it is a colour wheel. I know for lots of people, it's sort of, once you get out of doing like GCSE art or whatever at school, you, you tend to like not see them and forget about them so much. Um, traditionally, a colour wheel is based on red, yellow and blue. 
And then the idea is that by mixing all of those, mixing those three primary colours, you can make all the other ones. I do not use a wheel that is based on red, yellow and blue. And that is simply because, as I'm sure you can notice, there's a couple of things missing from it. There's no bright pink, there's no bright purple, and there isn't a sort of very bright sort of sky blue. So I always use a wheel that looks like this. Let me orient it the same way, I'll make it easier. Um, which is based on cyan, magenta and yellow. So in other words, sky blue, bright pink and yellow. Um, this is often referred to as like C, Y and M, which is what your printer uses. Uh, when you buy ink for your printer at home, or, or even like big printers, like on newspapers and stuff, it's the same thing, it's C, Y, M, K. The K is black. Um, there is some weird and wonderful yeah, reason I I why it is. Why it's but I can't, K. yeah, I can't remember either. But the K is black, and then your CYM is the cyan, yellow, and magenta. It's literally what commercial printers use as a model instead of red, blue, and yellow because it works. Um, from your magenta, you can engineer bright red. From your sky blue, you can engineer like a, a royal blue, and then of course, all your yellows and oranges. So it is a much more versatile um, model to use for, for looking at and mixing colours and stuff. Which is why when we sort of released a, a set of colours last year, the, the three core shades in there were cyan, magenta and yellow, so that you had that much wider range of colours that you can mix and things. Um, and like I said, it's what printers use. So next time you buy a newspaper, look at the bottom corner of the back page yeah. and you'll see four little dots of colour. Uh, blue one, a pink one, a yellow one and a black one and that is something that printers marks and they use just to make sure that um, if the blue is printing true, the magenta is printing true, the yellow and the black etc are printing true, then it means that all the colour mixtures they're producing to make the greens, the oranges, whatever, um, are also going to look correct. So have a look because it is, it's like it's a, it's a thing I do that's, that's founded in good theory <laughs> and um, practicality. Yeah, other industries and it's one of those things also you see, but you never really understood yeah. why is it there. Well, that's, and as you'll attest, Christopher, two books in, two self-published books in, and we are well-versed with the ways of commercial printing. Yes. <laughs> I never dreamed that I would ever need to learn quite so much about uh, commercial printing. So this is your colour wheel. Um, pretty much all the information you could ever need to sort of figure out to do with colours and colour palettes or how to mix colours or anything like that is, is contained within this. Um, it's kind of your recipe guide for mixing colours. So we've got our starting points, the magenta, the yellow and the cyan. If you mix magenta and cyan, you're going to get all of these colours in between here. So purple and then a bluey purple and a pinky purple, if you like. Um, if you mix your magenta or bright pink and yellow, you are going to get red, oranges, and then an orangey yellow. And then if you mix your yellow and your cyan blue, you are gonna get a yellowy green, so a lime essentially, a bluey green, which would be a, a teal or a turquoise, and then your green in the middle. So this can always um, guide you, and we'll, we'll mix some colors a little bit later on and I'll, I'll show you a bit more how that works, but quite often if there's a color that you want to mix but you're not sure entirely how, say for example, here, look, I've got some, <coughs> bunch of tapes sitting here. So if you wanted this sort of pale limey green colour, you can look at your wheel and you can establish, well, it's a green, so it's going to exist somewhere in here between the blue and the yellow. Um, it's definitely not like a turquoise, so it's not a bluey green, but it's got that lime tone, so it's going to be green with lots of yellow in it, and that is what is going to sort of help you arrive at, at the colour that you're trying to mix. You can also use the colour wheel to put colour palettes together. Um, you can have opposites, so basically opposite colours. They're called complementary pairs, and I always think that's a really weird word for it because they complement each other as in they go to work, go together well, but they go together well because they contrast. So I'd just refer to that as contrasting colours. Um, it makes sense. It does, yeah, it's just it's one of those things. Um, so those are your opposites, and they're always going to look really bright. So typically speaking, blue and orange, reds and greens, or pinks and greens, 
and yellows and purples. And those are colours that are always going to pop really, really brightly. Um, this was something that uh, Chris said just now about like with advertising and films and things. A lot of brands use those pairings to make things that are really bright. So if you think like a typical Cadbury's wrapper on a twirl, I think it is this particularly, um, is bright purple and yellow. And those two colours really like ping next to each other. Um, blue and orange. Terry's Chocolate Orange used that. And there's something else. We have this conversation every time. Oh, Can you remember what it is? Is it Iron Brew? Iron Brew is blue and orange, yes, because those <clears throat> colours pop. And then red and green... I mean that, you see that all the time, it's, yeah, it's in nature, lots and lots of flowers sit on that sort of pink and red spectrum with the green leaves. Um, and of course Christmas, anything Christmas themed, the two core colours for Christmas are red and green. And it's just that they, they really do pop. Um, so I've just got a few examples that I'll, I'll show you here, because it's always, um, it's worth remembering, you don't only have the option to use like bright green and bright magenta. Um, or bright purple and bright yellow, you can use colours within those families. So you could have, say, a lime green and a very bright pink. You could have a deep purple and a gold colour as a kind of yellow. Um, or you can have an orange and a navy blue, and you will still get that contrast and that pop, but in a more subtle, more um, intentionally crafted and, and pretty way. So to that end, just to show you, this one is just a little spray there um, of pinks and greens that again, you've got that contrasting colour but it is a lot more subtle than if you'd used really green green and really pink pink. This one here is your blue and orange combination but I've used a sort of sunny yellowy orange with a deeper orange and then those navy blue leaves. So again, you get the contrast but in a more subtle I think nicer way than if you had like bright orange yeah, and bright blue. Um, and then the last one, and this is always a, a winning combination, um, of purple and gold. So I've got a really, really deep purple there, and then this bright gold. And gold is, in essence, it's metallic yellow in terms of um, colour theory and how they go together. So again, you've got that contrast there. So that's our first um, sort of colour pairing, if you like, is looking for that contrast. Um, which you can do using those complementary pairs across the wheel. The other way, of course, you can make contrast is through uh, light and dark. So having, say, uh, I don't know, a very pale pink, but a very deep green. Um, or, of course, you can do that just with black and white. So there's one you'll see poking in the corner there. Um, black cake, white flowers, loads of drama because you've got high contrast in this instance taken from it being a dark colour and a light colour. Um, so we're going to take just a short break, and then when we come back, I'm going to show you the other common pairing you have, which is harmonious colours, where they are together. See you in just a second. So we've come back and we looked at our, uh, so we've had a look at the colour wheel, we've had a look at uh, con creating contrast, um, so that's either with your complementary pairings from opposite on the wheel, um, or indeed using light, light and dark shades uh, to create the drama and, and high contrast. Um, so the other thing that we can do is look at a harmonious colour palette. So this is where the colours come from the same bit of the wheel, um, and a great example of that, because I happen to have one is one I made earlier, um, is this one here, where it's all the blues, the purples and the pinks. They go together because they're neighbours on the wheel. Um, if you swap us crispy, thank God. 
So to find your harmonious colour palette, you're just taking a section of related colours. So that cake behind me, it's sort of from a bit of bright blue, lots of sort of darker blue, and then purples and pinks. Or you could have, oh, uh, you could have all the yellows and oranges. You could have blues and teals. Um, and those, because they are related, so, um, you know, green and teal both contain blue. They have that relationship in terms of the wheel and mixing. They're always going to go together and they will always look kind of soft and nice and pleasant together and harmonious, in fact. So a couple of examples of that, of course, is using a, um, making like an ombre effect, as they call it, where you've got a colour gradient that moves from one shade to another. Um, so I have got some sort of autumny berries that go through from a kind of pinky orange right the way up to a yellow which looks really nice. Um, these, this little collection of things here um, is all your pinks and corals. So again, it's sort of it's that same kind of half of the wheel, but you're going from pink round to a corally orange instead of orange round to the yellow. Um, and then of course with this, you can also then bring your light and dark into play, which is what I've got with this one here. Um, I've got a thing for... <laughs> I make a lot of berries. You do make a lot of berries. There are a lot <laughs> um, of berries there around. There the are. Um, so this one, it's you know, it's it's mostly yellow. There's a little bit of green in the yellows down here, but then the colours fading away. So we've gone from strong colours up to um, almost white. So again, much like using the light and dark to create contrast as well as the colour difference, here you're creating harmony and you're creating that nice sort of flowing colour palette by having that core colour and then fading up to paler ones. Um, so it's just uh, like, you just got, you got to think about colour, basically. And then of course, certain colour combinations, um, like this here, like it screams autumn, just because of the, the colours that it is. You can't deny that those are autumnal themed berries in some fashion, um, which is where it comes with colour that you need to think about what's the look you're going for, what's the feelings, the tone, um, and all of those things you're trying to create. So that one would definitely be autumn. This one, I mean, it's pink, it could be anything. We don't worry about that too much. But this one with the greens and yellows, I always think is very spring-like, um, because in spring is when you get those bright, fresh, greeny yellows as everything starts to grow and regenerate. It's all and it's all coming to life. Um, similarly, there's, hang on, let me just grab some, like, <laughs> there's stuff literally everywhere in here. Uh, this this was something that we, we made recently just for fun. It's, it's a long story. Um, but it's wintry. So the whites, those blues, obviously snowflakes, but again, the colors and that sort of shiny silver and the white and stuff, it's definitely, winter themed you know um so why why have you added those pink berries into that so the pink berries in there is just to give that little pop of contrasting color um because it can also work really well hang on let's find some more examples sorry did i throw you off with that it's a very valid point <laughs> <laughs> so you've got so if you've taken your your complementary colors so let's say for example um, we've got our like our pink and green here because that that is a like it's a super common one because it's nature basically so much there is pink and pink and green. If you want to, <clears throat> if you want a little bit more drama and contrast to it, you can have a kind of a, an extra pop of colour that of something just really bright and different that again is going to affect how those other colours look. So for the pink, you could go for. You could, it could be as simple as having, you know, if I sort of layer this up, you'll be able to see. Like here, you could just have some dark green with it, which would then give you a, a deeper base and a little bit more contrast. So that's kind of using your light and dark contrast. Equally, if you wanted to, you could go for a little bit of, of bright yellow. So that would give you a more sort of springtime, brighter feel to it. Um, or what you could do is, is pick a neighbouring colour, so go for something purple. Now I must be able to find well, something purple. Oh no, because that's, that's from the other one. Hang on one second. Stand like, by. 
It is rare that I can't find something in the right colour somewhere. Um, so yes, you can have a pop of purple with something. And this, this is where, and this leads me nicely on to um, the next bit that I was going to talk about, which is that with, with colours and building palettes and stuff, um, it's important to experiment. It's always important to experiment because that, that is, that's how you learn and it's how you, um, you discover things that you weren't expecting and you find new bits and pieces and stuff. So to do that, you, you can use like literally anything. Um, you could use, so the reason that I've got all of these out, this is my ever growing floral tape collection. Um, they're mostly shades of green. So if I'm trying to pick a shade of green for something, then um, I can use those as reference. So let me find a pink flower. Uh, it has to be. Don't tell me you somewhere. can't find a pink flower. Yeah, no, it's yeah. alright. Just hang on, hang on. Okay, so look, here's some. I don't know what they were from, but they're there. So you can just play with what colour is going to go. So that is our like green green, and like it would work, but it doesn't fill me with joy. Um, this one here is oh, that nice pale green again, which I think that's that's getting closer to uh, to what's going to work with that. But if you went for a pale green next to these, you've got all pale colours, so you're going to end up with something that is soft and pastely and sort of calm in its appearance. Um, this one here is sort of like a dark olive green come khaki. Um, I don't think that that goes at all, to be honest. It's too dark and too harsh next to those pale colours. So the one that I've left till last, because it's the one that I think I would use, um, is this one here, which is a much brighter, is that showing up all right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, a brighter, limeier green, which next to those pinks is gonna look really nice and they're gonna pop a bit more. Um, which brings us on to something else that I like to talk about quite a lot which is that um, I will always, 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 um, I am prepared to sacrifice realism in the name of good design. Um, now, I know there's going to be some of you out there listening to this that is going to make you, give you the shivers even just thinking about it. But actually, for some projects, um, there's no such thing as a lime green rose leaf. But I promise you, lime green rose leaves with a few darker leaves sitting next to bright pink flowers will look fantastic um more so than what a well no i was just going to point out that one isn't a good example of that one of what you're saying what is the blue antler the blue cake right there yeah is a good example of not being realistic you know i know i'm getting there chris right. <laughs> um so yeah changing the color of leaves which can be changing the greens so that you have got greens to match. So yeah, a bright lime and a bright pink go really well. Um, another one that I really like to do is uh, like oranges and coral type colours with khaki green, so like an olive green. That will look really, really nice together. Um, and of course, now I'm getting to it, is if you wish, go wild. There, there's no reason, there's no law, um, there is no like flower police that are gonna come and have you for making um, leaves in whatever the heck colour you like. So like with this one, the leaves in that, they're all bright blue and navy blue, which next to those pink and purple flowers, it just looks really cool. Um, so I will always, 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 always change the colours up, play with the colours, um, throw realism out the door in the name of producing like good design and something that works really well. Um, so yeah, you can use bits of tape to do it. The other thing that I will do sometimes, um, and I'm sure <laughs> most of us have something like these. So this is every bit of ribbon I've collected in the 10 years that I have been doing this. Um, I never throw anything away, do I, Christopher? Never, no. But it's sometimes a struggle. <laughs> it means that you do end up with all these lovely things Oh, I'm pulling that off the reel there. Hang on, let me just pick a few. That you can use as colour reference. So bits of ribbon, if you uh, if you if you knit or crochet or sew or whatever, then bits of cloth, bits of um, yarn, whatever. Basically anything that has got a colour to it will work a treat. So if we had those two, if you swap, Chris, thank you. 
So here we've got like a really rich teal, this bright sharp green, and they look really nice together. And then we can play, so like, <laughs> this colour is not the one, that is for sure. Um, that looks a little bit better, but it's a bit too salmon-y for it. Um, or maybe purple, like that looks nice. So you can, you can use literally anything. Um, I tend to collect, well not collect, that makes it sound like it's intentional, it's not totally intentional, but I will, um, if we get given a nice piece of wrapping paper or um, like greetings cards, wrapping paper, greetings cards, packagings of things. Like if I'm in the supermarket and I see something that just looks pretty because of the colours, that could be like, um, oh, I don't know, makeup, like soaps. Nowadays, soaps, if you go down the soap aisle, some of the packaging on them is absolutely beautiful. And I'll just take photos of it. And it's just, if it's all, or friends' clothes, I've done that before to people. I've made them pull their skirts so that I can get a photo of the print. Um, anything like that of different colours that, um, that inspires you and is going to give you something that you can work from and turn into a cake, basically. Um, and then the last, the last little bit on that that you can do, hang on swap us over is test things with colouring pencils. So this is a set of pencils that I have had since the dawn of time that if you want you can play with like just to start putting a colour scheme together and it's just and you, or you could use felt tips or you could use um, paints like whatever you've got basically. So like if I wanted a green to go with this I can try this one and like that would work but it's a little bit dark so then you might <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of noise and you can absolutely bet that ah, the one I want is going to be near the bottom so you might do that and then decide that actually we need something a little brighter in there as well but it's just the point is that doing something like that it's just giving you an idea up front um, as to whether or not the colours that you're thinking of using are going to work um, so that concludes our second bit. Um, we'll come back and we're going to do some, uh, we're going to mix some colours up and stuff. And I'll just give you a little idea of how I do some of those things. Um, so yeah, we'll see you in just a minute. Thanks guys. Hi, I'm Natalie Porter and this is Immaculate Confections. guys welcome back so we're going to mix some colors now um, doesn't sound very exciting but I've got some little tricks and tips that I can show you that uh, make mixing colors way easier um, I've got a nice big lump of flour paste and I'm just using flour paste because it's what I've got and it's what I'm used to and I've got a little pot of petal base um, so you can either use that or Trex or Crisco it's just a white veggie fat and it's just so that it's not uh, everything's not sticking to my hands um, so if you swap us over Sweetie, thank you. Um, so these are our colours. We've got a set of eight, and as you can see, we have included the orange, the green, the purple, and then black and a brown. Um, aside from the black, the orange, green, purple, and brown, you can mix from scratch. But do you know what? Life is just a little too short. So we have included them. But for the purposes of this, um, I am going to show you using just those three primary colours. So that's our magenta, our yellow, and our blue from the colour wheel. So I will start off and do some yellow. So you can see I'm just going to go in with a cocktail stick or you can use a tool or whatever you want to just mix that colour in. And to begin with, and this will become clear, I'm after making them really, really bright. So that's some nice bright yellow that I can pop down just here. I'll do the same with some pink or magenta. 
grab another stick. And actually, I'll use this one, I'll show you. Hang on. So if you're after pale colors, you just need like the tiniest bit of, of food coloring. Um, these are what we call gels or pastes. So you can see they're not liquid, they don't like fall out of the pot or anything. Um, so they're great for going into fondant, sugar paste, modeling paste, flour paste or gum paste, because um, they're not gonna change the consistency of what you're doing. Hopefully you can see if I put that down on the white there, it has gone a pale pink, like a nice pink. Um, so you can see how little color you actually need to add to start coloring your, um, your paste. But like I said, I'm after a, a deep color for this one. So I'm just gonna add and mix in a little bit more. There we go, that should just about do us. And then lastly, we need to do a little bit of blue as well. In fact, a little bit more, I'm being a bit stingy. With my own flower paste. <laughs> right, so again, we can go for a reasonable amount. Uh, the true miracle is that I've managed to do this without colouring my hands. That is very impressive. Yeah. That does usually happen. So you can see nice strong bright blue there and actually I'm just going to add just a tiny little bit more colour um, so that we've got nice saturated shades to start with. Okay, so if I pop this here and we'll be able to use it sort of as a as a reference. Um, so if you do, and I'll try and do this quick so we don't all sort of get too bored. Um, so bit of blue, bit of pink. If I mix these together, thank you, like so. You're going to get a purple. So that one lives about there. If we do blue and yellow, we're going to get a green. And they're sort of equal and natural thing. Yeah? Yes, about that. I mean, this is something that you, you need to play with, um, and I will come to. But So that's a green there with the blue and yellow. And I suppose all I'm trying to do here really is prove the theory. And then we'll do some pink and yellow, which... Uh, Magenta. Magenta and yellow, which, unless physics has changed, will produce an orange. Um, so it really is as simple as that. And then if you wanted to make, for example, um, a turquoise colour, you're going to want to take some green and add some more blue, because turquoise is sitting between green and blue on the colour wheel. So I've got some blue and some green. We can mix the two together there and you're going to get a really nice uh, sort of tealy turquoise colour. Um, similarly, what other one should we go for? Let's go for warm yellow because that's a, a nice one. But I'm just going to grab a damp cloth quickly because I've got mucky hands. It finally happened. Hang on. It does. You always inevitably end up with a bit on your hands. Yeah, no, I know. I know, a sensible person would wear gloves. Actually, so we, we had the, we had need to put a lot of super glue on something recently. And um, I have to touch things. Mm. Like, I can't help it. It's like every time, for example, I, I make caramel or something like that with sugar, and like, it's also like glossy and amber coloured and it's lovely. I have to touch it and then I run around the kitchen cursing um, because it's like a thousand degrees and it burns. So anyway, I had to touch the super glue. Um, and it was only after I was coated in super glue that I was like, oh, I totally could have worn a pair of gloves, couldn't I? Um, so anyway, <laughs> moving on, warm yellow. So I often find this shade of yellow is a little bit too acidic, basically, like it's full on. Um, so to make a warmer yellow, we can take a little bit of orange and mix that in with our yellow. And we should get a really nice, kind of warmer golden yellow type colour um, and we'll do one more just because we've done a few there 
Let's do like we can go for a plum. So we'd take some of our pink and just a little bit of the purple. There we go. And we are going to make ourselves like a, a, a pinky purple, essentially. Um, so I'll also quite often, I tend not to uh, name colours too much. Some are obvious. Um, for example, lime. Everybody knows what you mean when you talk about lime or, or turquoise. Everyone knows what you mean. But there's a lot of other colours like plum or wine or something. It could be anything within this range here. Um, which is why I tend not to refer to things as being plum or being teal or being this because, you know, one, one man's lavender mist is another man's snowflake something. I don't know. You know, like I when know, you... wishy washy you made up colour names. That Aye, but you, like paints and whatever. Because you're trying to sell it to somebody. Yeah. It's not a true representation of what the This is very is. true. Yes, because grey zero zero one with a hint of blue isn't it's quite just, as inspiring. Yeah. My parents bought new paint the other day for the hallway that was grey and I think obviously it was called oh, sugar okay. dust or something like that. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it was basically just a very pale grey. Um, so yes, that's it. I tend not to do that. Um, what have we got? We've got the purples. So like I said, in the colour set, we include your green, your orange and your purple, just because, frankly, life is just too short to mix everything from scratch. Um, and of course, we've got some gaps, but you know, you mix your blue and your purple, you're going to get the bluey purple that fills there. Do some green and yellow, you're going to get your limey green. And do some more magenta and orange, and you're going to get a sort of a rich burnt orange type thing. Um, so that is how we mix those. You can also, what was I going to say? There's something else that I was going to say. Uh, we'll do that in the next section, actually. No, 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 just I'm um, thinking yeah, in my head, yeah. Too many things. Um, so yes, that is the basics of mixing colours. This process of doing that, I would absolutely suggest, if you want to get to grips with colours, um, sit and make them. Sit and make yourself a blob of the brightest pink you've got, some cyan blue, some yellow, and then just sit and play with and colour them. Um, because it is the best, like the best way to learn is to do, essentially. And um, so that's our third bit. We will be back with you in just a few minutes and I'm gonna show you a couple of extra little tricks for mixing. And then I reckon that's probably gonna be us done, isn't it, Christopher? I think so. Yeah, all yes. right, see you in just a moment. Welcome back for the final part of our first adventure in colour. Um, so we just did some basic mixing and I just want to show you guys some more, uh, let's call it advanced mixing. Um, so Christopher, if you swap our view back for me there. Certainly. Thank you very much. Um, so actually for this, the best illustration for this is that I'm going to use, I'm going to make a little bit of lime green. So plenty of yellow, a little bit of green, and we're going to mix those up and uh, again, if the gods are with us, we're going to come out with a nice lime green, which we sure have. So if you want to make like um, a dusky muted colour, you just want to bring in a little something from, from across the wheel. So for example, if we were to put a little bit of pink, and it really is just a little bit of pink, into your lime there, we are going to end up with a sort of olivey cum khaki type green. Can you see how it's muted the shade? And in fact, if we add a little bit more, it will be even more obvious. So again, look at that color. It is nice and bright, but the more pink I add, the sort of more olivey and dull it becomes. So that can be a really good tip and a fantastic one for greens, because actually, if you're doing sea light, I think that's a really nice color. And it is a much more natural looking colour than your very green, sort of grass green or a bright lime or something like that. So that one is a really good tip. Um, there's also, uh, sorry, I'm messy again. Let me just wipe my fingers. Don't buy. Um, 
So the other thing, sort of trick that I use for mixing colours, do you want to say that now? Okay, now I'm going to say something else first. Okay, so the first thing as well, if I move these out of the way, and I can just put these all kind of more or less in order there. Right, and then I'll leave this one off to the side because he doesn't count because he was mixed across the wheel. Uh, if you want to, don't don't ever. What I'm trying to say is, don't ever forget <laughs> that you can add uh, you can add white basically. So on the colour wheel, you've got the sort of pale pinks in the centre and then the darker pinks as you come out. Pale blues going darker. All that is is changing the saturation. Um, in cake things, your white is your starting flour paste or sugar paste or whatever. Um, if you were painting, then obviously you'd be adding actual white paint, but for us, it's um, it's the starting colour that you've got there. Um, if you wanted to make all of this into a very pale blue, you would need to add a lot of white to desaturate that colour. So what I would tend to do is take a new lump of white, start with, let me just re-knead this, it's so warm today. It is very warm today. Not helped by the fact we've got all of our studio lights on. And the windows shut and everything, which is why I think I'm getting increasingly shiny by the minute. Um, so you take a little ball of blue, you can just add that in and mix it up. And you can see it's coming up much paler. And then you can, if you wanted an even paler shade, you can repeat that again. Um, and this is something that I will do, sort of working from these darker blobs. And that's why when I was first mixing those colours, I put plenty of colour in so that I had a strong yellow, a strong magenta and a strong blue. Because if you want it paler again, another blob of white, take a bit of your medium one and mix that in. Um, and I do that simply so that you have got control over how much you're adding because it is very difficult very difficult when you've got a toothpick or whatever in this to know how much colour it is you've picked up and especially and it's just by nature of the, the dyes some of them that are slightly liquidier it's really hard whereas if you do it this way you can take as big or teeny tiny small piece as you like and mix that in I mean it's quite remarkable you haven't said your favourite saying Oh yeah. So on with that in mind, boys and girls, <laughs> uh, you can always add more but you can't take it away. <laughs> oh my god, I usually say that at least a thousand times a minute yeah. when we're teaching you stuff. Well, they'll definitely hear that um, over the course of these episodes. Yeah, you definitely will. Yeah, you can always add more but you can't take it away. So if you added a little bit and you made this colour, but your goal was actually that colour, you can always add more. But again, if you do this by accident, you end up needing huge amounts of extra white to make that colour paler. So that's why I do it this way. Um, I did, some of you may know, um, if you don't, hopefully you will now, that last year um, I wrote a, another book that was all about colour. I'm just gonna sneakily, it looks like this. Um, which basically it is, the whole thing is about colour and in there I take our set of eight pastes um, and mix them into over 200 different shades using only those eight and the power of the colour wheel and knowing and learning how to use colours and how to mix them and how to combine them and stuff. Um, with those colours, I'm going <laughs> to, these take up a lot of space, so I'm going to do what I can to show you. So these were all my little kind of recipes and they are a great illustration of are we going to fit them all on? <laughs> um, they are a great illustration of how many colours you can make just from a basic set and understanding how that works. That is why this is so important, because you can turn just a handful of, of starting colours into such variation. And then from this is how you build those interesting enticing and dare I say it exciting looking colour palettes that are going to catch the eye and kind of bring attention to your work um, and like I was saying don't forget about your kind of light and dark and your saturation and stuff 
Um, so taking this one, because teal's are always one of my favourite colours. Same thing. And um, this one, the recipe for this one is four parts blue to one part green. Lots of colour added, less colour, less colour, less colour, less colour and the least so that you get those different saturations. So there is just, there's so much. And what, I mean, what it basically is, I don't know, have you guys heard of um, uh, Pantone ever? Yeah, I don't know who I'm asking exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've no, seen it, you know, I've studied looking at Chris, I'm like, of course he has, because he went through the pain with me on all of this. So Pantone make paints and they are, um, within printing, like I said, we've learned a lot about printing. They are the sort of, the, the gold standard of print colors. Um, they have, Colours that can be made from CYMK, so pink, yellow, blue and black. Um, and then they also do spot colours, which are specifically mixed inks that are only that one colour. Um, and they do... Oh, sorry, could have got that down before. Uh, they make these things that you may have seen, which is um, a Pantone colour book, basically. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. all of those. Um, so again, this is all part and parcel of what we learned, printing books about colour. Um, so what I've essentially done is created, if you will, <laughs> the Pantone book of um, for food colours. And it's just, like I said, guys, it is just, it is so important. And if nothing else, I would urge you to experiment with colour, try some things that are different. Next time you're in the supermarket, um, which I appreciate, it's not quite the experience it used to be at the moment, but next time you're there, make sure you've got your phone with you. If you see um, packaging that looks nice, take a photo of it. Or sometimes the, um, is it red chard, is it? Oh. Red lettucey leaf uh, things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> that are this gorgeous deep red plummy colour alongside these bright greens. Like just you can draw inspiration from anywhere and that is uh, colour will make your work better. I can't say it simpler than that. Yeah, it really look will. For the colour palette around you. Um yeah, and just take inspiration from all of those things because it is the most fun. And experiment. Sit with your colours, sit with your um with your paste and stuff, just have a go. Um, so I hope that was an enjoyable introduction to our adventures in colour. Um, I hope you liked it. I'm Natalie, um, Natalie Porter. I run Immaculate Confections. Um, give us a follow on the old social media. We'd love to see you there. So it's Immaculate Confections UK, because uh, as you can probably tell from my voice, that's where we are. Um, and his voice. Or, uh, so yeah, on Facebook and Instagram it's that. We have a website which is immaculateconfections.co.uk, so do check that out as well. If you've got any questions, then do get in touch. You can ping me a facebook message or comment on the video and stuff um because i'm always happy to help and i'm always keen to talk about color always um so yeah thanks for having us we really are like i said at the start excited to be here on cake flicks again yep. um we will be back next week so over the next five weeks we are gonna do a nice little run through all the colors um in order like for a rainbow of course uh, so i think the first one we're going to look at is red and pink and then we'll do We'll work our way through sort of yellows and oranges, greens, blues and teals, and um, blues and purples. So I hope you'll join us next week. Thank you very much, and we will see you all again soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.